This is my LED planter project, which I made more than a year ago. And I will show you how to build it by taking it apart. First, let's take a look at the back. There is a USB port, so I'm gonna plug it in. And let's see if something happens. The light turns on. So, I'm gonna take my smartphone now and see if I can find the network. Currently it's called Hucube version 4 because I'm using it to develop the firmware for the Hucubes, but it's going to be the same firmware that's running on this, so it's some shared code base. I connect to it and then I can refresh the website that is being hosted by this tiny planter here. And I can see that I have this configuration screen. So if I change the color here, click save, you'll see that it changes the color. If I just add something white next to it, you might be able to see it a bit better. So let's take a look inside. This is an ESP8266 on a clone D1 mini board. If I put this here, you'll see the colors a bit better. So if I change the colors on the left hand side here, save it, it changes. And I can also toggle it on and off here. That's about it. So what's inside it? Let's take it apart. So the, the top part is uh, yeah, kind of basic. It's three twin, uh, two printed parts. One for the earth and the plant with holes in the bottom and yeah, this to contain in any surplus water that drip, drips out on the bottom to prevent it from molding. If you put one of those dry little plants inside, you don't have to water in any case. And that's about it for this part. The more interesting part is going to be this. So this is just the base to, to hold the plant. I think I got a bit inspired by Minecraft here, by dirt block, not sure anymore. This is more than a year ago when I built it. And there's a D1 mini. I have three cables that disappear somewhere in the back. And if we turn it around, we have two LEDs sitting here in the top. Let's unplug it and let's take a look. So what have I done here? Okay, I think I forgot to design this hole here in the initial print and I cut it out later and hopefully I added it onto the STL file which I uploaded on Thingiverse. Let's take a look. Yes, I did. So there's two holes here in the back and I think I had the intention of adding screws here in the back to screw this part here, but I, th I think the resulting print was tight enough that I didn't need those screws, but I can still pull it out here. You can see those matching two holes and the cables disappearing here in the shaft of the top LED part. So this comes out like this. So we have the bottom part that, that is printed with wooden PLA or wooden infill PLA and just the D1 mini glued here in the corner with hot glue. And as this thing doesn't get too warm, hot glue is fair enough for this component. Let's take a look here. Oh, okay, this is one of the first PCBs I milled myself. So you can see, whoops, let's put it around this way. Here it's without a solder mask to WS2812B LEDs and you can just see, may just make out the, the cables coming all the way through the shaft. And I think, yes, I printed it, it's standing up, which you can see by the layers here. So this is printed without supports this way. And when I try to get the cables through, I think I noticed that it doesn't go across the bend, so I had to break a hole here in the back and pull it out first and then just put it back in with the 90 degree angle to get it out here in the front. And the LEDs, as you can see here, are attached with tape. And if we just pull it out, we should be able to see the board a bit better, let's see. I think we don't have enough leeway here for the cable board. You can see the cables going here into the back of this PCB here. And yeah, that's more or less it. If I would build this again, 
first I would check that I have a proper hole modeled here for the D1 Mini, maybe a bit more here underneath to support it or I just screw to put it here so we don't have to glue it and maybe can reuse the part if we get bored of it. And this I think I wouldn't go with a custom PCB, I would just take a piece of those light strips and just put four LEDs inside and just glue the, the LEDs here to one side. Maybe I have an example lying around, yes. So if you have one of those light strips you can do exactly the same thing. Just This is five, you can just cut them off, solder the cables to it and if they're long enough just glue it in with hot glue again and then just get them through the shaft. Feed it all the way back in again. Up. Here we go, it's back inside. Let's add the tape again here on the top. That's this part and then put your favorite tiny little plant. I'm not really good with plants as you can see, I'm better with electronics and 3D printing. So that's about it. Let's take another look. This is how it looks like when it's done. And if we plug in the USB, it's still working. It takes a few seconds to find the Wi-Fi or if there's none, create its own Wi-Fi and then turn on the latest safe settings. So what about this? This is a website that I coded myself. I wrote my own code generator that generates all the configuration code to generate this website from the ESP, host it entirely from it. So the phone is constantly complaining that there's no internet connection or the CSS and JavaScript is provided by this device entirely on its own. But I will create a separate video explaining how to do all the code stuff because this will be too much for this. So I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments. Have fun. Bye bye.